All right, all right. I'm here for you guys. I I'm I'm really am. I'm I'm really here for you guys. You see, I like to bring you information that I never got when I was coming in. There was when I was coming in there was there there was YouTube of course. There was there was many of people that was giving good information that don't give good information anymore. I mean the technology has changed, the the footprint of YouTube has changed. We have a lot more platforms now. Um, a lot of people jumping from YouTube to other platforms and finding success on those other platforms. We got platforms like TikTok, uh, TikTok truckers now that's, you know, that's giving uh, super fast, quick uh, information. Platforms like Instagram, which is not a which is not a picture sharing platform anymore i mean it's a it's a it's a live feed platform and a, and and more video platform you know and then of course we still got the tried and true youtube but if i if i would have came across somebody like a lockout man back in the day that's that's making the calls to all these companies and and getting the information from them to bring out to you, then again, I, it's like I said before, I, I said it once, I say it again, I would have never chose U.S. Express as my first company. I probably would have, you know, did a little bit more due diligence and, and probably would have picked it out another company. I mean, sure, I, I, I still will probably would have been with a major carrier because, you know, only at that time, major carriers was the ones that was bringing in the inexperienced people that never drove a big rig, that never drove a semi, that don't know nothing about the culture. Those are the only companies that's that's bringing them in and 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 giving them a chance you know cr england crst swift knight snyder all all the others other big companies that bringing you guys in to um to learn how to drive all right prime for example now if U.S. Express wouldn't have been my first choice, then what would have been my choices? I don't know. I, I didn't have somebody like a lockout man to call these different companies to, to find out. Maybe it would have been Prime. Maybe it would have been Snyder. Maybe it would have been CRST or CR England or Western Express. Probably it would have been either one of them. But you got to understand something. When you're coming into this game, New Jack, is you're not going to make no money. You're not going to make, you're, you're not going to make no money. All right, so, all right, so you're not going to make the third year money in your first year. You're just not. It's not going to happen. It's not foreseeable. I mean, maybe you, you got some drivers out here that comes on uh, Facebook or Instagram or TikTok and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the first year, I made X amount of dollars and this, that, and the third. Some of them come on here and they don't even show proof. They just want to just say that, I guess. But no. Take me, for example. I did not make three-year money in the first year. It didn't happen for me. It started gradually increasing with experience. The money comes with experience. The longer you stay with a company, the more money you make. Of course, you're gonna get the raises. You're gonna get the bonuses. 
the longer you stay with a company, the more money you're going to make. And then when it comes time for you to level up, you can negotiate more money. I hope I said that right. I hope I said that right, that you can negotiate more money, right? A lot of these companies, and I, I, I said it before when I was talking to, uh, I was talking to Cambria a couple of days ago, and I was, I, I, I was kind of like saying, like, I see all these guys over here talking, over here talking about how much money that they making and they making all this kind of money and all like that. But I, I have yet to see a company driver that works for like the major carriers or some of the major carriers out here making six figures. I'm going to say that majority of these companies average out at about 50 to 60 to 70 maybe 80 maybe 90 if if you do specialized if you have all your endorsements and you do specialized then maybe you can top at that tier but a lot of these companies that i've talked to within the five years of me doing to make the calls there's only very few companies that gives you 70 cent a mile 71 cent a mile but you guys also understand this too the companies that's giving you the 70 cent a mile are the companies that's not giving you the miles to maximize that 70 cent a mile now companies that's giving you like 48 cent 50 cent 55 cent maybe you will maximize your miles but if you, I'm not sure if this is you, all right, but I'm just saying on average that some of the, some of the companies top out, you come in, even that, even that an experienced driver, let me, let me give you an example. I talked to James LaPrat and he said that the company he came in with, which was Smith Transportation, be be sure to stay tuned for that call. He said they they he's a 30 year driver and he was brought in at 48 cent per mile. Now, James LaPrat just loves driving. So the money really didn't matter to him. You know, he's a veteran, you know, he's just he just loves driving. That's it. But just think of a legitimate person that's actually 30, 30 years in the game that was like looking for, you know, looking for a good driving job. And then they're going to offer you 48 cent at 30 years. I don't know. But for the new Jacks, like I said before, don't come in thinking that you're going to make three year money in the first year and we got something else to talk about too so with that said let's get started Brian Little <laughs> Hey guys, Lockout Man here, back again with another commentary for you. So before we even begin, make sure you stop and hit that like button. Make sure you let YouTube know that you liking the program, that you liking the value, that you liking, just, just liking the content that I'm bringing to you, all right? Make sure you hit that like button. It is free. It's not hard to hit. It is free. If I get like 50 views, at least give me 25 likes. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not asking for much. Let's just make it half and half, all right? If you also like this content, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit that all button. Make sure you hit that bell to get notified for whenever I drop videos. Unfortunately, I don't do live videos as much as I used to. 
but I'm still coming with the value for you guys. Also, stay tuned for all of the good content that the Lockout Men podcast show provides for you. And again, if you like it, subscribe. If you want, if you like it even more, join. Hook a brother up with some coffee, man. Well, look, set aside from the intro, um, basically my content is geared towards new jacks. My content is geared towards new drivers that's coming into this industry. Um, I, I like to provide value for something that I should have got when I first came in the industry. All my experiences and you know conversations with various people, various companies has amassed to what I feel that you should probably get when you come into this industry. What company to go to? All right. What to look for as far as training goes, how much you should uh, how much you should negotiate after you get your experience. What companies out here is 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 offering what I try to bring that value to the new drivers. So, again, if you guys like content like this, make sure you share it. You know, maybe maybe somebody in your town is going to school that's that just happened to wake up in the morning and just say, hmm, I want to be a truck driver today. How do I go by becoming a truck driver? Well, hey, Lockout Men podcast show has some good information that you might want to find out about. Go ahead and give him a listen. Share the link. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. All right. So for you new drivers out there, you know, this commentary is not going to be, you know, it's not going to be long as always. But for you new drivers out there, you if you don't have, if you're not in school this year and you don't have your license this year, I if you're interested in getting your license, you're contemplating on getting your license, you, you keep saying that you can't afford your license, look, you better get on the ball right now and, and jump into whatever school or whatever trucking company that's, that's going to teach you how to drive, jump in there now because the FMCSA, that is the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, is about to make some changes right now. They about to make some changes that's gonna make it a little bit hard to get your license. It's not like you're gonna open up a Cracker Jack box and boom, I got my CDLs. It's not gonna happen no more. It's not gonna happen no more. I'm just saying, the CF, I mean the CF, God damn it, man. The FMCSA, CSA, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration now, I'm just saying now, coming February 7th, 2022. Make sure you march your calendar. February 7th, 2022, the FMCSA is going to make it a little bit harder for you to get your licenses. Why? I'm about to tell you why. The training provider registry improves highway safety by supporting the FMCSA's goal of ensuring that only qualified drivers are behind the wheel of a commercial vehicle. That is CMVs, by the way. They love abbreviations. I don't know why. The registry will connect entry level drivers with training providers who can equip them with the knowledge to safely operate a CMV for which commercial learner permit CLP or commercial driver's license CDL is required. Sign up to receive news well, that's, that's for me. It's just saying sign up if you want the news about the training registry for the requirements and the applicants, training providers, and the state driver's license agency. The FMCSA's entry-level driver training, ELDT, I keep telling you, they love abbreviations, 
regulations set the baseline for training requirements for entry level drivers. This includes those applying to be or obtain a CDL class A or B for the first time, upgrading from a B to a class A or obtaining a school bus passenger or hazardous material or yeah, hazardous material endorsements for the first time. So for you guys that don't have your passengers endorsements or your hat uh, or your hazmat right now is the time to get them. If you don't have them better get them because if you don't get them now after February 7th, you're going to have to go through a scrutiny. All right. A scrutiny to get them. All right. The ELD regulations are not retroactive. All right. The entry level driver training requirement do not apply to individuals holding a valid CDL or an S or an H or a P endorsement prior to February 7th, 2022. And applications who obtains a CLP prior to February 7th, 2022, obtains the CDL before the CLP or renewal CLP expires, the applicant is not subject to the ELDT requirements. A little bit more about the training provider registry. Once operational, the FMCSA training provider registry will retain a record of which CDL applicants have completed the new training and cert certification process outlined in the entry level driver training ELD regulations. The ELD regulations and training provider registry were mandated under the Moving Ahead for Progress in the 21st Century Act, MAP 21. God damn it, man. The ELDT final rule was based in part on the consistent recommend recommendations from the agency's entry level driver training advisory committee. A negotiated rule mark committee that held a series of meetings in 2015. Woo! That's a lot. That's a lot. That's too much. That's too much. And you know, I, I when I do my 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 pull ups, and I ask the I ask the drivers today, and majority of the older older drivers say, I asked them. I, I forget what I asked them, but I asked them what what you don't like about trucking today, and the biggest answers are the rules and freaking regulations that changes just about every year. They was talking about this shit back in 2015 and now they implementing it now. Well, not now, but now they implementing it in 2022. Of course, the ELD, the electronic law device mandate just got pushed into the effect at the end of 2019. So for you new drivers that's thinking about coming into the game, you guys, it's gonna be a little bit harder and it's gonna cost a little bit more. I paid about 52 and some change, maybe 54, I don't know. But I know I paid a lot of money for my license. Now with the additional training that the schools gotta do, it's going to cost you a little bit more to get trained. Compliance with the new entry level driver, the ELDT rule is quickly approaching February 7th, 2022. The education requirements will change for the whole spectrum. So if you're upgrading or you're just getting your CDLs for the first time, you're going to have to 
it, again, you're going to have to go through a whole lot of scrutiny. Gone. I'm telling you, gone are the days of just um, <laughs> of just grabbing the learner's permit from the from from the from the C, uh, from from the DMV. You know how you could just go in there and you just do your general knowledge, air brakes and con uh, combinations and boom, you got your CDL permit. Going all those days that you can just go in there, get that drive with a CDL holder. You know, you probably drive with your grandpa. You could probably drive with your father. He could show you how to shift gears and all like that. And that that's all you need. That's all you need is just to learn, just to know how to drive it. Not knowing of the safety regulations and everything else, but just drive the truck. And then boom, as little as a few hours, you can head over to head over to the DMV, take your CDL road test, and boom, a freshly crisp CDL license for the new Jack driver. Those days are gone the process will become more detailed and will take more time as before again before i get up out of here under the new requirements an e an entry level driver must prior to taking the cdl test that's the driving test excuse me successfully completes a prescribed program of theory and behind the wheel instruction provided by the school or other entity listed on the FMCSA's training provider registry. Now, here's my question. Is your entry level truck driving training program are they ready for the new requirements? Now, when you go to these truck driving schools, not only that they got to be accredited, but now they got to be registered. So you got to make sure that these schools that you go to, they got to be registered with the FMCSA entry level driver training rule. So are you guys ready for that? If you guys ready for it, again, if you're contemplating, if you just keep saying to yourself, keep pushing it off, keep procrastinating, procrastinating, like me, you know, back in the day, I procrastinated all the way up until 2015 before I got my license. I'm just saying. <laughs> what was that? End of 2014? Yeah, end of 2014. I procrastinated all the way up until then. Oh, I ain't had no money. I ain't have enough to pay. I don't know what to do. Again, if I knew of a lockout man on YouTube back in the day when I was interested, I, I, I would have got I, I would have got in it back. I would have got in it way back in before my 40s. I probably would have got in it in my 30s. I would have probably had about 20 years plus right now, but I'm just saying. So for you new jacks out there, I'm just saying, pay attention and listen. Get your license now while it is inexpensive and cheap. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm, I'm not saying go to a Cracker Jack or, or Captain Crunch and just go in there and pull out your CDLs. I mean, I, I want you to go in and, and learn all you can learn about being a CDL holder, a commercial vehicle driver, because there's a lot of shit just sitting behind the wheel of an 18 wheeler truck and just going down the highway. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff to learn. It's not like sitting in your car, you know, every, when you get behind the wheel of this vehicle, of this mass truck, the whole situation changed. To be honest with you, I think I became a better driver 
once I once once I started driving truck, believe it or not. Everything that I used to do in a car that used to distract me, that used to I don't do that no more. Because of course you can't do it in a truck. Because you gotta be a little more zeroed in on what you're doing behind that wheel. So let me know in the comments below, y'all. Engage with me. Let me know. Um, if you're a new driver and you just happen to see this video, let me know how you feel. If you need some help, definitely reach out to me. I'm, I'm easy. I'm accessible. And I will, you know, holler at you and let you know, you know, if I can, if I can, if I can be some type of help to you, reach out to me. That's Lockout Men Podcast Guest at gmail.com. Again, Lockout Men Podcast Guest, G U E S T, at gmail.com. Or come over to Instagram, hit me up in the DM at Lockout Men. Hell, even come over to TikTok and hit me up over there. That's TikTok backslash Lockout Men Podcast. Or make it simple. Hit me up in the comments below. All right. Now, I'm not here to try to scare you from not coming into this industry because they say that, you know, they, they say we need drivers. There's a driver shortage. Yeah. Yeah. It probably is a driver shortage, but with drivers coming in that's going to school every week and then companies having orientations twice a week prime every monday and every wednesday there's new people that's coming into this industry but but again gone are the days of just getting your learner's permit hopping in a truck with your grandpa or your father or your buddy and just have a couple of hours and then all of a sudden you just pop on over to the uh DMV and just get your license right then and there. That's not going to happen no more. And now the schools, you got to be careful of the schools that you go to, too, because they got to be number one. They got to be accredited because a lot of trucking companies, I'm just now noticing that if the school is not accredited, that trucking company is not going to hire you. And that's from the majors. If that school is not accredited, they're not going to hire you because they're not going to see that that training for what it is. So you got to be certified. The school got to be certified. The school got to be accredited. And now and now they have to be in compliance with the entry level driver training rule. All right, so that's going to do it for the Lockout Men podcast for today. Thank you guys for watching and thank you guys for listening to all the way up to this part right here. I am Lockout Men. I am here for the new jacks, the new drivers, the entry level drivers. I'm here for the students. I'm here for I'm here for the guys that's that's coming in to drive. I was there once. Now I'm trying to give you value. If you feel that this, if you feel that this channel gives you the value, please help the channel to grow. All right. Please help the channel to grow. Support the channel by liking, by subscribing, by even sharing. You know, maybe watch the maybe maybe watch the commercials for like a couple of minutes before y'all click skip. I'm just saying. But um, but anyway, um, if again, don't forget to like. It's free, all right. The lights are free. Try let's let's make if 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 I get twenty five views, let me get twelve point fifty, twelve point or thirteen lights. All right, help a brother out. I'm helping you out. You know, I'm I'm. If you feel that I'm helping you out, you know, get at me. If you need some help, get at me. All right. I am. I am available. I am accessible to you. If I can help you out, I will try my damnedest. All right. On that note, I am out of here. You guys take care and I'll come back at you with another one. Peace. Ryan Little. <laughs>